Welcome to this sample audio clip, which comes from the series entitled Multi-Hall Conversations with Jim Brown. In this recording, Jim once again speaks to sailor, boat builder, and marine entrepreneur, Doug Jane. Doug is the owner of Jane's Marine in Reedville, Virginia, which can be found on the web at www.janesmarine.com. In this segment, Doug shares how he discovered multi-hulls and one thing he has learned from the constant camber boat building technique. And in the full audio, he shares some incredibly fun stories from his many years of experiences as a multi-hull sailor and charter operator. You can find out more about this historic audio conversation series with Jim Brown at www.outrigmedia.com. Well, today we're talking with uh, my old friend Doug Jane. That's J A Y N E, and Doug is the guy that really got the Sea Runner Charter Catamaran business off the ground. But uh, I've known you for longer than that, Doug. Hey, how far back does it go? Well, I'd see. I've known you. Um, I met Russell when he was sixteen, and. Steve, when he was about the same, 16, 17, and I met you a few years after that. So there was just before you moved to Matthews County. Yeah, I was in my 20s. So I guess that we're talking 30-plus um, years for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, uh, the the, uh, the great thing about uh, our acquaintance to, to me is that that if you hadn't had the the gumption to uh, to want a charter catamaran when you were living down there in in Charleston, uh, I'm not sure that that, that any of this uh, Sea Runner Cat Constant Camber Cat thing would have happened. You're the guy that got it off the ground, and what well, that was you, uh, that's that was extremely complimentary. But I was living in Matthews County uh, with my monohull my 50 foot catch that 30 ton you know uh lead lugger to, and i used to tell everybody i'm going to you know build a big trimer and call it super unleaded <laughs> and uh and i never believed that i would do it and i actually did do it and um <laughs> but i watched you guys building um uh those boats at callis wharf and oh, yeah. it was that experience that turned my head a little bit and I think the reason why I turned my head is because one of the big issues with the, the multi-hulls were the Dixie Cup-like exterior. And the Constant Camber uh, came up with an idea that uh, really gave you a thick skin, as thick as my, you know, wood monohulls. And, 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 and it was still light, and, and it was extremely strong, and... And it's that thick skin that made me think about it as a boat. It was I'll no be longer darned, Doug, piece. You never told me that before. I I uh, I see what you mean. Um, and for the listener, we've got to say that the uh, constant camber is just a streamlined method of cold molded laminated wood boat building in which we took almost all of the weight of the framing and put it into the skin. It's, it's it is a thick skin. Um, yes, that I boat? mean, you know, the expression for me when what we are, we had the expression that you know, multi hulls are fine, just don't hit a Dixie cup, yeah. and <laughs> you know, quarter inch plywood between you and the ocean didn't give me any real security when I've seen logs and containers and everything else out there, and uh, you know, a lot of people have gone to steel hulls and all kinds of stuff. But that constant camber, the the fifty two foot catamarans that we're building for Coast Guard inspection, I think that without the Coast Guard, they could be a little bit lighter. 
but our skins are seven eighths of an inch thick, and seven eighths of an inch thick is it's it's everything you need. It's it's it, there's nothing. I mean, you're just not going to get it any stronger than that. Well, yeah, uh, the, the thing that that really turned me on to it was that you also have that because of the compound curvature in constant camber, you have that so-called eggshell rigidity. And that's yes. what made it possible for us to get rid of the frame. The Coast yes. Guard makes us put in some framing, but it's a relatively simple frame compared to what you'd have to build for skeleton in a in a boat that that uh, had a really thin skin in order to uh, to save weight, either thin even, or very lightly glassed foam on both sides. That's uh, right. Those, and those, even the even the red cedar construction technique has got a tremendous amount of framing in it yeah Mm -hmm. Uh, and all of that framing was gone a few bulkheads they were light they were minimal and the boat is just tremendously strong it's a it's a real battle axe i mean and yet it doesn't have the weight to it that you would uh, you know associate with a battle axe well i i think this boat you just finished, Doug, which is a is a 52 foot Sea Runner Cat uh, designed by John Marples. I think, I think that's number six for you, isn't it? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> At least one too many, I anyway. <laughs> I don't know, and um, and it's kind of interesting because um, John Marples is the naval architect, and without him, the project would not get done. Make no mistake about it. None whatsoever. But it also has a lot of influence from a lot of sources. So it's kind of a fun project at this point because of all those influences. Well, you've had a whole lot of experience with uh, with charter cats. Uh, let, let's let's start from the beginning. Tell us about Ocean Island. Uh, you know the big teak catch you had when you were introduced to multi hulls. Oh yeah, that boat was sweetheart. She was an intercontinental missile. She weighed 30 tons, and, uh, you know, a third of it was lead. Uh, It was teak plank. The Dutch built it. They did some sort of planking technique that uh, did a full-length plank, although I think there were some scarfs involved. I never found any. I'm not sure if there were. The frames were acacia. They were laminated, so there were no cracked frames anywhere. It was a rare boat for that type of basket weave construction. It had copper rivets, and it was a real nice shape. It, it, it lended itself to, you know, that 60s, you know, race boat kind of wood boat shape, or Rhodes or a Sparkman's. It was indeed designed by a Frenchman, Andre Canoe, and the Dutch built it. I bought it in Antigua, and, um, and it was a 50-foot boat with a tiller, and she really sailed well. She had spruce teardrop spars and all the neatest stuff of the time, and um, it was a ship. And uh, I, I have to say, it was, you know, I was in my 20s, I was a strong buck, and it was a lot of work to move that boat around. It was a lot of work. It was really hard. I mean, when you got that girl cranking and you buried the rail and you really were driving her, you were, you were, it was a marathon of effort to do it. And, you know, now I, I get into these 50-foot catamarans, and we do the same speed, and it is so easy. It is just no effort whatsoever, and, and now that I'm older, even I can still enjoy it and do it without any, I mean, the effort. And so what I say is that if I had had, uh, if I had listened to Russ Brown and let him talk me into building one of these constant camber catamarans at that point, <laughs> I would still be cruising. I'd still be uh, chomping at the bit on that boat. I'd still be out there driving around. <laughs>